Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and today I'm coming to you from the boiler room. This is the first video to accompany the series of articles I'm doing on the blog about the album I'm trying to put together and as part of that process I'm sharing my thoughts and decision making around creating a series of tracks uh, obviously in Cubase, but you can take that and use it in whatever DAW you use yourself. So, what I'm trying to do as part of this process is to think outside the box, or at least to think of different ways of doing things that I haven't done before and that make me approach things differently to try and keep it fresh and perhaps get some new ideas from new ways of thinking. One of those that I'm doing is to use the chord track in Cubase to sketch out arrangements rather than approaching things as I have in the past of writing a drum part and then layering on top of it bass, what have you. With all the songs, I've written them first. They were written on keyboards or guitars. So I have a sketched out arrangement as I wrote them. But what I want to do is to be able to play with those arrangements to see how best to vary the instrumentation and the dynamics of the arrangement, hopefully to make for a more interesting end result. So we're all set up here with the standard arrangement in Cubase that I've developed in the previous videos. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to add a couple of tracks. First track we're going to add is effectively a blank one. And that is actually going to be used to sketch out the various sections of oops, didn't mean to do that the various sections of the song um, you can use the marker track to put specific points in the song but what we're doing here is developing and copying pasting sections of the song so that won't work for us also, this song is a highly repetitive one. It's built around a chordal riff. So you're going to end up with 16, 20 bars at a time of the same chord sequence. And without the sections being drawn in, you've got no idea where you are. So we're going to draw those sections in now. Um, I always start at bar two, which leaves me a little bit of space at the beginning of the song. So the first thing we do is to draw in eight bar uh, segment which is going to be the intro I always do that two capitals at the beginning very vexing I'll just zoom this up to single bars then we have the verse which is 12 bars I'll call that verse and then we have the chorus, which is 12 bars plus the riff repeated. So we'll just do a 12 bar section there and call that chorus. And if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you'll know that I do like my colors. So we'll just recolor them. I'm using the left and right arrow keys here to scroll up and down the keyboard. So having set out our three basic sections, what I'm now going to do is add a chord track. And I'm also going to put that into pink so that I get the faintest line here rather than a strongly colored one. Now for the moment, I'm going to ignore the intro and the verse because they use the chordal riff and that doesn't work as easily. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go straight to the chorus. Now, we can type the chords in and that's fine, but what I want to do is to be able to hear the chords as I type them in. So we're going to add a track, an instrument track under our keyboards, just an instance of Halley and Sonic. And we don't need the player, uh, the, the editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in an organ sound, a clean combo organ. And I'm also to color it so that it's a keyboard instrument and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the MIDI modifiers and transpose it up 
by 12 uh, notes, an octave in other words. If we go back to the chord track, you'll see it says use monitored tracks. I could specifically select the Halley and Sonic, but I'm just going to leave it there. And it has an option on voicings. You can either select piano voicing, basic voicing, and a guitar voicing. For piano and guitar, that affects what options appear in here, but I'm just going to leave it with that for now. Okay, so to add the chords, just get your pen, click, there's a chord. Now you can keep adding the chords, but what's easier to do is if we right click to get our arrow back, go into the chord assistant here, go into the editor, and you can just click. Now we don't hear anything. That's because we're using the monitored tracks. We haven't put the monitor on on the Halion Sonic. So, hallelujah. It's a bit loud that. Hang on a minute. Let's pull that back down a bit. Okay, back into here. There we go. And you just click on there. And it puts another one in. Now it puts it on the next bar. And you just click through putting in the chords you want. Now you can get quite exotic as you can see. You've got majors, diminished, sustained fourths, of which more later, sevenths and major sevenths. C major 7 there, we'll actually put in a C7 chord. If you want a C major 7th, it's C 7th there. So, the reason I mentioned that... is we've got a B flat major 7th appearing out of nowhere to confuse us. Quick modulation into F major, as Cubase is helpfully telling us. And then the rest of it is this four bar chord sequence. So we'll go back to the beginning and we'll go to individual beats. And we're also going to switch from using the beat to using the quantize because the chord sequence itself is off the grid to a little bit. It's not on the beat, it's on a half beat. So I'm just gonna sketch the chords in, in the positions that they go. And then we're going to click on that. And instead of using this to add, I'm going to use the right arrow key on the keyboard to move me over. And that's it. That's me done. I'll go back to using the bar. Cut and paste it in. Because I'm not on the bar with this chord here, if you try to duplicate it, it doesn't work properly, which is a bit irritating. Go up to single bars. Copy that and off we go. Pasting at the curse position. And like I said, the, uh, the chorus isn't 12 bars long, it's longer. It's actually 20 bars. So we'll pull that out to 20 bars. Grab that little lot. Paste them. And now if we do a zoom to full, we have the entire song, or the three sections, set out. And we'll come back down to here. And we can have a quick listen.
Now then, that's fine, but we want to actually replicate this whole structure three times. And now that we've got a full structure, one, two, there you go, it's done. And we come back to here and again, just color it so that you can tell that you're not in the first verse. You're actually on your way to the second verse or even the third verse. So there you go. And the fade at the end is the chordal riff repeated to keep you going. Yeah, that's not quite right. Never mind. Yeah. Let's um, delete that. We'll delete that. And hopefully now, yeah, we can actually delete, repeat the whole thing. I think it's a bug somewhere in Cubase. We'll um, highlight those because they're not actually the intro, they're the fade. Recolorize them. One. We zoom to full. There's the entire song sketched out in a matter of minutes and we're good to go. Just put the left and right markers at the front. I'll save and we're going to save it into that. And there we have it. Song too far from home, sketched out and ready to begin building the arrangement. Until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll fade out with that organ riff.